Greetings viewers, I am ETCG1 and welcome to this channel. We start things off here with, if it is your birthday, happy birthday. Enjoy the digital cake I went and found for you on the internet. Yeah, I'm still happy, I'm still elated, and we're gonna talk a little bit about my truck. In a way, this is kind of a companion to the latest video that I posted over on Eric the Car Guy about it being fixed. It is, it's back. It is totally back, and this clip says it all. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down in the description. Elation barely begins to describe my feelings right now. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about, well, some of the things I've done to the truck since and some of the things I plan to do to the truck going forward and just celebrate the truck. You know, it's dad's truck and now it's back and it's better than ever. Oh, and those of you wondering if the dipstick is blown out or anything like that, every, I went out and broke in the rings. That's when the dipstick popped out. Since then, it has not come back out and I haven't really been nice to the truck. I mean, I've been driving the truck. Like, I've never been able to drive the truck. I mean, ever since I've had it, it's been blowing oil everywhere and it was pinging really bad, so I would just very gingerly accelerate and drive around and dad, he barely, I mean, if he got into the third gear, <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a surprise, but I mean he he loved the truck. He still loves the truck and and that's honestly the best part of all this for me is that I've taken something that he's given me, I put my spin on it, I've given it back to him and he's enjoying it as much, if not more than I am. So, you know, that's that's really the mission behind the ETCG Dad's Truck uh, build project, whatever you want to call it. So in that sense, mission accomplished. So what are my plans from here? Now that I got the truck finally running and not leaking, I mean, ever since I got this truck, ever since Dad gave me this truck, in fact, it's had a nickname, Puddles. I, I think I've mentioned that previously. But right now, there's nothing out of the truck, not a drop, not a anything, it's no longer puddles. I mean, that just in and of itself is awesome. Even more awesome is I get in, I turn the key and I go. And I have been driving this truck because I, I want to put it through its paces because I, I plan to use this truck. I wanted a truck before dad gave me this truck. In fact, I was just about to go out looking for one and dad's like, well, I'm going to give you this and give your brother the boat and that kind of thing. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> So here we are. Um, it's been a year since I started building it. I started the build in uh, February of 2019. I had it finished in June of 2019. That was all of that work. Uh, compressed timelines and the issues they create. That could be a video in and of itself. But we're here now and things are running and things are better. But I have done a couple of things uh, since then. In fact, I just shot a video this week about replacing the rag joint on the steering because I did everything else and I still had some loose steering. Uh, that's forthcoming. Uh, also, I just purchased all the stuff that I'm gonna need for a trailer brake setup for this uh, truck. So if I'm gonna do a car hauler, um, those require a special plug-in for you to use when you, that basically uh, allow trailer brakes to work. So it's an electric brake setup on the trailer uh, because you've got something really heavy behind you and you don't want to just depend on the brakes of the truck. Uh, the trailer also has brakes. So I'll be rigging all that stuff up and making a video about that. Also, I didn't make a video about this, but this was a massive improvement. Now that it didn't, now that it's not spraying oil everywhere, including under the hood, that I don't know if you noticed that sort of nappy, ratty uh, under hood uh, insulation that was on the truck. Well, I replaced that and it changed the look under, under the hood of the truck dramatically and I'm, I'm very happy with the result. Found a mouse nest in the old one. Yeah, I'm never happy to see those. And there was insulation from somewhere else that looked like it could have been from the floor or up inside the dash. I just, uh, I didn't rip the dash out when I did all the work that I did. Hopefully everything is okay. So far, everything seems fine. And like I said, I just get in, I turn the key and I go. Fuel injection is cool. Uh, Cause I remember, well, after I got the engine running right, I was like, all right, well now let's set all the parameters and everything correctly. So there was, you know, setting the TPS up and making sure that was within a certain percentage. I got that and got my idle and everything set up. And uh, also my cruising uh, air fuel ratio, so you can set target air fuel ratios. And I leaned it out during cruise, like 13 and a half or whatever, or something like that. But wide open throttle is still 12.5 to one. But anyway, uh, I went through and I did some fine tuning and now it's just, it's running smooth. It's running right. And it's just, it's just so nice to, after all that work, to get in, turn the key and go. 
awesome. A couple of other small things on my list. I'd like to replace that driver's side fog light. It's a little bit yellowed out. I just, I want to swap that. And now, now I can focus more on the appearance of the truck. Now that I've got it pretty much mechanically sorted, there's still a noise coming from the rear end. And I've been thinking about that and I'm not so sure I'm convinced it's pinion bearings. I just remember it being very difficult to get that thing in and out of the, uh, of the carrier assembly, in and out of the axle housing. And I think my shims might have just put too much of a preload on those uh, carrier bearings. So that's a possibility, so eh, that's coming up. But anyway, I can't forget about the brakes. Now, a lot of people ask me about the brakes uh, in the video and I, well, I've been trying to work on it. I've just put the third master cylinder on this truck. So third new master cylinder and I'm still fighting this issue, but I'm, I'm learning a lot about braking systems. I believe I found a solution and I believe the problem is, is they just put crappy brakes on these trucks from day one. And I, I'm gonna see what I can do to find a set of upgraded calipers, which would require modifying the spindles. You know, it's, it's, and hopefully I don't have to change the wheels if I, if I go with those brakes. But anyway, I'm working on a solution for that. I'd like to have the definitive GMT 400. Okay, this is how the brakes got fixed. Because up to this point, master cylinders and things really haven't been cutting it. That rear disc brake conversion kit, that SSB thing, SSBC thing. I think they're out of business now and I'm not surprised because I honestly hated that kit uh, at the end of the day. I mean, it did give me rear disc brakes, but does it break any better? No. So uh, I do want to get to a point where I've got the brakes sorted out and I do want to do this before I start hauling trailers, uh, car trailers specifically. And specifically as far as what I'm hoping to haul is dad is also giving me the 51 Chevy that we've had in our family for a very long time, which is the reason why I need the car hauler and all that stuff because I plan to take this up to uh, New York to his shop, pick up the car and bring it back here. I don't want to forget, uh, it was running cold. And, and I mentioned that when I took it out and, and drove it in that video, that the temperature didn't seem to be coming up like it should. And that radiator that's in there, that be cool radiator is one BA thing. I mean, as far as keeping an engine cool, highly recommend that thing for these trucks and it's probably the best stinking radiator you can get for it. My opinion. Anyway, cause, cause my setup, in fact, it's cold now, but like only cooling fan one has come on and cooling fan two is set to come on at like two, 10 or 215 or something like that. But I had to replace the thermostat. Brand new thermostat was either hanging open too soon or whatever, but while I was driving around, I mean, temperature was like 140-ish something, and I couldn't get the heat to come up. So I replaced the thermostat with a better name brand type, and it's a 180. There was a 180 that was in there, but it certainly wasn't opening or closing. I could probably test it and find out. I just know that after putting that thermostat in and bleeding the cooling system, I now have good heat and it heats up to temperature like it should. You know, actually driving down the highway, it comes down to about 160, 170, but it's colder right now. So, I mean, temperatures at the warmest are getting up to like 50. So 40s or whatever driving down the highway, that, that seems, well, totally awesome. And I plan to tow with this, as I mentioned. So it's nice to know that I've got a kick butt cooling system. But the other thing I did while I was in there when I replaced that thermostat, since it was right next door, is the coolant temperature sender for the gauge on my dash. Not for the computer, but for the gauge on my dash. The two never really seemed to match up. So the numbers for the gauge on the dash and the numbers on my tablet that the ProFlow 4 was reading, never quite matched up. So uh, in order to get the sensor for the uh, gauge to, to go into that intake manifold, I had to do these two different sizes because the coolant temp sensor for the gauge was an eighth inch and the hole in the uh, intake manifold for the coolant passage was a half inch. So there was quite a gap between the two and I had two different adapters to make that work. Well, I went out and found a proper adapter, a half inch to eighth inch, and now I got it in there. So now the, the probe for that sensor actually sits further down inside the coolant and it seems to read better. So that's something you might take away and, and that not to you know extend the any temperature related sensors far away from the coolant itself because it was reading cooler. But now that I've got it immersed down more in that coolant passage, it seems to be more accurate. So that's another thing that I did. That's all the stuff that's going on with the truck. We're still buzzy, we're still giddy from all of that. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things I've solved since then and some of the things that uh, are forthcoming. But you know, let me know what you think about the truck. And, and a lot of you uh, have truck projects of your own that might be similar to this, might've been inspired by what I've done. That is awesome. That, that is why I'm here. That's, that's what I enjoy. I enjoy 
when I put something out there that's positive and you walk away with something positive and well, you know, the world is a slightly better place for, you know, at least a few minutes and that's that's why I'm here. Automotive questions, air at thecarguy.com, linked in the description along with additional videos and stuff like that. And for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with the truck series, I suggest you check it out. It was a, it was a pretty intense build, <laughs> a pretty compressed timeline, and there was a, well, some special guests at the end as well. So if you haven't seen the truck series, highly recommend it, linked in the description. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world, appreciate it when you do that. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time.